Hello friends and welcome to Sustainable Prepping, your home for fear-free emergency preparedness and a sustainable life. My name is Brecky and today I'm going to bring you three brand new books that I've added to my collection over the last few months and books that I think might be worthwhile to be adding to your collection. If you're brand new, I want to say a great big welcome. I'm so glad you found my little slice of the internet. And if you're not new, I want to say a great big welcome back. I am growing and it is all because of you and your support. And I am really and truly grateful. Everything I do is to bring this community together. And so if you find any of these videos valuable, especially this one, please feel free to share it to a friend or to an online community that you think will benefit. It also helps me if you like this video and subscribe to this channel. It lets me know that you you want more fear-free emergency preparedness content. The first book I want to talk about is The Modern Homestead Garden. This is by Gary Polarczyk. This is a book I got probably a couple of months ago, but I was able to just go back and reread it recently as I am preparing my own uh, new garden for spring or, or new beds for spring. Gary Polarczyk has a YouTube channel. I'll make sure I link him down below where he talks about all kinds of different aspects of gardening. He's one of several gardening YouTubers that I happen to follow. I like this particular book and I'm recommending it to to those of you who are getting into gardening for the first time because he really walks you through the basics. This is a great book. It holds your hand, walks you through the basics. It tells you how you can start seeds indoors, what you need to consider, how you need to prep your beds, how you can do things in a cost-effective manner. I just really appreciate uh, that very um, basic without being, you know, dumbed down level of describing what you need to do to get started. A lot of people have started an interest in homesteading in the last few months and building a garden is a challenge. Sometimes gardeners can forget that non-gardeners don't know what they don't know. So I have found this to be a very useful book. It's also a beautiful book. It's full color. It's just really, really lovely. It has charts. Um, it's just a really, you know, attractive book to own. Um, so I have really, really enjoyed having this. In fact, I'm going to be loaning it to a friend of mine in the not too distant future. One of the other things I really like about this is the first sort of two thirds of the book are all about getting that homestead garden up and going from seed starting to prepping your raised beds or in ground to talking about fertilizer and crop rotation, giving you some charts and giving you some ideas. But then he talks about some of the most popular plants to grow and what you can do with them. One of the things that I have found myself and I have found in talking to new gardeners and new homesteaders is you have all this harvest now what do you do with it, <laughs> right? Now what do you do with it? So he's got some great, very basic recipes. It's not a lot, it's not extensive, but it's got a handful of really solid ideas for how to use that harvest that you've put together. Additionally, he's got some great ideas for organic pest control and you know just how to take care of this garden in a way that is sustainable and can sustain your family and is really cost effective. I really appreciate that this is very cost effective and mindful of how expensive gardening can be, especially when you're just getting started. So if you are someone who is just starting to garden, if you're someone who is starting to homestead, if you're someone who maybe has grown a garden but you wanna get serious about sort of vegetable production, garden production, really turning it from kind of a tinkering hobby into something a little bit more robust, this is a great beginner's guide. If you have been gardening for a while, this will be a little too basic, but it could be a great gift for someone who is new to gardening. The second book that I picked up recently is Nuclear Biological and Chemical Survival Manual. This is adapted from the US Armed Forces and it was adapted by um, Dick Couch and he was a former Navy SEAL. So this has got a lot of clout and this is a very useful manual. And when it says it's a manual, it really, really is. One of the things that I like about this is there are diagrams, there are uh, checklists here. It's a very user-friendly model. And because it's been adapted for civilians, it does talk about families. It talks about the different responses based on being urban or being rural. It talks about the different kinds of disasters within each of these overarching areas and items that you may want to have on hand that will help you respond better. Um, I haven't read this whole thing yet. I've skimmed through it and I've started reading it. It's a little intense, I'll be honest with you. However, 
this is one that I'm really glad that I have on hand because in the event that we have a situation where a nuclear, biological, or chemical um, weapon is used, we have fallout, I want to know that I have everything in one place physically available to me so I can respond effectively. My goal is to create a tab system so I can quickly get to checklists and items that I might want to get to. And that's something I do really like that. Um, it's got whole lists of action steps. It's a very action forward book. So if you're someone who is just getting into emergency preparedness and you would like to have sort of that intermediate level of working knowledge, right? This is beyond being prepared for a climate emergency like a snowstorm, a flood, a fire, an earthquake. This is that next kind of big step, right? When you are in your preparedness. I would say this is a great book to add to your library. If you're brand new to emergency preparedness, this might not be the book you want to invest in right away. There's some other uh, beginner friendly books that might serve you a little bit better. But if you've started building that library, I think that this would be an essential addition. Now there is another book on nuclear warfare and how to respond to nuclear warfare that is considered sort of the gold standard. And it's one I would like to eventually get. However, this one covers three different kinds of attack. And so I wanted to have a more holistic approach, a more holistic book in my library before I invested in a more specific book, if that makes sense. And the third book that I'm adding to my library is Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Diseases. Now this comes from Dr. Joe and Amy Alton. This is from the author of the Survival Medicine Handbook and the authors also run the Doom and Bloom YouTube channel, which is all about medicine and first aid in a survival scenario. I believe that they both were in the military and have an extensive background in survivalist training. They are the gold standard when it comes to um, emergency preparedness medicine. Now, if you don't already have it, you should first get the Survival Medicine Handbook. I mean, this you should get first. If you're going to get any single book for a preparedness library, this is the one to get. This assumes there is no doctor coming. This assumes the grid is down. This assumes we are in a survival scenario and you have to use this manual to do the thing. Again, this is not something to replace medical help or advice. This is not something to replace seeing a physician if that is available to you. But if it isn't, and many of us are preparing for a scenario where it isn't, this is essential. So because I have found this so useful and there are tons of reviews on this book specifically, if you'd like me to do an in-depth review, just let me know. I decided to pick up this book. Now, this is essentially a guide to how to use your antivirals, um, your antibiotics. So it has a list of the major kinds of antibiotics one might receive, one might have, for example, like Cipro, penicillin, and it tells you what they're used for because different antibiotics are going to treat infections and disease differently. And if you don't know how to use them, you might give somebody an antibiotic thinking it will help, but it doesn't actually have an effect on the infection or illness that person has. So this has both a list of the different antibiotics. Here's a list of some of the different antibiotics, okay? Kind of gives you an overview, but it also has a list of common infections. So the first part of it, right, has different sorts of infections one might face. I really like this because it is a layman's guide. It assumes you know nothing about medicine, you know nothing about care, you know, wound care, you know nothing about how to treat um, illness. And it's walking you through, it's holding your hand and walking you through how you evaluate an illness, how you evaluate an infection, and how you would go about treating it. Now, one of the things it does include that I think may or may not be controversial, it's not in the preparedness community, but it might be in other communities. And that is he does have a way of discerning how you might use fish or other animal scale antibiotics in a human, if that's all you have access to. At the time that he wrote this, there wasn't wide scale access for prescription, human prescription level antibiotics, unless you were needing them for immediate use. But with the advent of Jace Medical and now Mark Cuban's online pharmacy, that could change and we may not need the animal antibiotics, but he does have a whole chapter dedicated to how you would use animal antibiotics if that's what you have on hand. 
So keep that in mind. I think it's a little dated in that sense, still useful to have and to know because that might be what you have access to. Um, but we are sort of changing how we go about buying our prescriptions. And so that could change some of, of what's most important in here. One of the things I like about this is he also includes um, a section on natural antibiotics and antivirals. He has a whole whole sort of recipe section on things to do and what to use and then how to go about packing your medicine bag. Now, there is a whole section in here about how to put together a medicine bag, um, but this one is gonna be a little bit more focused on the antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial um, components. And I appreciate how holistic and thorough this is considering you know it's not nearly as thick as this chunker so I've added this to my collection to really round out my first aid I recently you know added a bunch of uh, first aid equipment to my my first aid kit and I recently got the Jace case um package of, of antibiotics that run the gamut. So wanting to know how to use those most effectively was important to me in my emergency preparedness. Hello, future editing Brecky here to say that I remembered I forgot one of my books and I didn't want to miss it out. I have When There Is No Dentist. This was one of the additional books that I added. Now the Survival Medics Handbook by the Altons does have a section on dentistry, but he is not a dentist. So I wanted to include a book that is designed for uh, dentistry specifically. This is designed for the developing world uh, in communities in, in the developing world where there are no dentists coming. They might have a dentist come once a year if they're lucky. This was really created with this lack of dental hygiene, lack of dental access in mind. It is very basic, okay? There's some very basic drawings. It is really designed for folks who have um, no medical knowledge on how they can deal with dental hygiene issues, with ex tooth extraction, um, with basic oral surgery. This is not going to be cosmetic. It is not going to be fancy, but it is going to see you through. As far as my research has found this is considered the gold standard as far as dentistry in the prepping community. I've looked through it a little bit. I, again, I think I said it before, I'm a little bit squeamish, so I don't love these sorts of things, but I wanted to have a book that was dedicated to dentistry. Not because I don't trust uh, Dr. Alton and Nurse Alton. I think that they are doing really great work, but this isn't his specialty. This is a very different uh, level of medicine. So I wanted to have another resource. Again, this is creating a redundancy. This is really just creating extra layers and insulation. One of the things that I need to get to really make this book useful is a set of dental tools so that I can do a majority of the things that they are asking and teaching you how to do. And I don't have them yet, but I have them on my list for things to get over the next couple of months. One of the things I really like about this is they talk about preventative care. So hygiene, nutrition, and preventative care to kind of curb the worst of uh, dental problems, things that we might all need refreshers on, but then they go through, you know, tooth extraction, infection, gum infection, all sorts of issues. Um, you know, they have how to sterilize here in the back. And again, it is really, really basic, okay? This is um, written and designed, again, for the developing world, for a community that doesn't have access to regular medical care, dentistry care, um, even um, upper level math and science okay so it is holding your hand and walking you through and i think that's a really good thing to have so if you want to add a book on dentistry a specific book on dentistry then uh when there is no, or excuse me where there is no doctor by murray dickinson this is the one to go with and i will make sure everything is linked down below for you so these are the three books that i am adding to my physical print book library now i do think it's important that we have physical books if the grid goes down, you may not have access to the ebooks that you have stored. Now, it's possible you could store them on a tablet and keep them in a Faraday cage and you would have them as long as you can charge them. However, if something happens to that device, then all of your knowledge is lost. And so I think these physical copies are actually essential. Just in case we have grid down scenario, you now have a physical library that is not dependent on being able to plug it in and charge it. These books can be shared and passed around. They can be lent. They can be read by multiple people. You can write notes in them. You know, you can make addendums and add sticky notes and all kinds of things to these physical books. So I'll 
although I am not increasing my uh, fiction library, I'm using digital uh, ebooks and audiobooks for fiction, I am leaning heavily into my nonfiction physical library because these are just going to last. These are going to be there. These are going to serve you when the tech stuff doesn't serve you. Friends, comment down below and let me know if you've read any of these and how you've found them. Were they useful to you? Did you find them um, good additions to your libraries? Also, let me know what recommendations you have for additional books to add to my library. I do have a fairly extensive library and I am trying to fill in gaps in my knowledge. There's a couple of very technical books I wanna get around simple machines, electronics, and things like that that are totally out of my wheelhouse. But for now, I'm really trying to get books that will cover the most useful skills and things that I can already start employing right away. Links to check out these books will be down in the description. And if you want to hang out with me outside of YouTube, you can find me on Instagram and our Facebook group also down in the description. I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you have something great to read. And until the next video, happy prepping.